Now, I ain't one to gossip, but I will bring you the tea. Welcome to Chronicle Speak. So the Blast.com released some information about a week ago and I wanted to first look into their story and confirm it before I brought it to you all. So they are obviously more nosy than I am because they looked into the family of R. Kelly's sex tape victim and child they uncovered three bankruptcy filings. Now they never mentioned their name or showed the documents but they listed different cars, credit cards, other debts, homes, just a load of stuff. Y'all know I'm nosy, so I wanted to find out more about the family that was okay with dropping off a 13 to 14 year old child at the studio with this grown man. And she was like, oh, I was dropped off. And I was like, huh? Immediately got on the phone with my sister. What y'all doing? Why is she down here by herself? And then maybe 30 minutes to an hour later, the, um, my brother-in-law was walking in the door. And when they found out that there was a tape with this man doing sexual acts with their 13 to 14 year old child, why would they disown their own sister that's trying to get him locked up? Why are they still on his side? Does he have something on them? Is he, is he threatening them? Did they sign some type of non-disclosure agreement where they can't talk? There would be no way for me not to protect my daughter. Now, according to the Surviving R. Kelly documentary, everyone recognized this 14-year-old girl in the video. Everyone knew it was her, from her best friend to her basketball coach. But her family, her mother and her father, would not testify on her behalf. Sparkle was left to stand there alone with one of her brothers. I have no sisters. They ain't talking to me. None of my family is speaking to me, uh, except for one of my brothers. So you can Google online and find out exactly who the girl is and who her parents are because I'm putting bankruptcy documents online. I'm not going to tell you their first name, but their last name is Landfair. So we're going to go ahead and get into the tea. I just want to let y'all know that I went through about 150 pages worth of bankruptcy documents to really find out what was going on with this family. And they were so far into debt, child, y'all just don't know. So I understand why Sparkle was trying to put everybody on, but it looked like her plan backfired. And I honestly feel like this family was so far in the debt they felt like R. Kelly was going to get them out of it and they took the money from him and didn't prosecute him when they should have. So my Chronicle Speaks vets, I already know what time it is honey. I got those receipts for y'all. Inspector Chronicles dun -dun 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 -dun. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Landfair applied for bankruptcy three times, the first time being August of 2007, just one month before the R. Kelly trial began. Now, this was the trial that involved the sex tape that their daughter was allegedly in. Now, during the time, the family was in hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt. Yet, they owned a $74,000 Lincoln Navigator that was a year old and a two-year-old Ford Focus worth $21,000. Now, the parents made $8,200 together. The dad listed his career as a bass player and the mom worked at a mall. But their expenses were $8,400. That leaves them in the negative $200 a month. At the time of the filing, they had $100 on hand and $200 in their bank account. Yet and still they had a $74,000 depreciating debt, which was the Navigator. My aunt would call this living half the hog. I would call it major deduction. They lived in a $238,000 house. I'm not going to put a picture of the house up, but looking at the house, it definitely ain't worth that, child. People need to move to the south and get more bang for your buck. Now, they have pages upon pages of credit card debts totaling over $80,000. Money owed to the government, medical bills, you name it, they had it. Now, they were able to file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy and reaffirm the home and the two cars. So that means that they were able to keep them and have them under a new contract that was more affordable to them. Them. Otherwise, the other debts were all wiped clean. However, R. Kelly supposedly or allegedly gave the money not to testify against him and whatever amount he offered them, it obviously worked and they didn't say a word. Now, do y'all honestly think that they would put getting out of debt before their own daughter? What would cause a family to deny something like that? Is the cost of fame even that important? The dad played bass for R. Kelly on a lot of his albums after this even happened, even up until the 2010 Love Letter CD. I just don't see how a father could let something like this happen to his daughter and still be okay with the man that did it. Like, our fathers are supposed to be our first love. This is the person that just gives you the world and supposed to protect you. And it seems like he definitely failed her. And not only did he do it, but the mother did it as well. 
Sparkle did an interview with Blender after the R. Kelly sex tape trial, and she said that soon after meeting R. Kelly, her niece was hanging out at Track Studio, telling Sparkle that her mother had dropped her off and that her father was playing the guitar. And when Kelly's entourage related the concerns of the affair to Sparkle, Sparkle confronted her niece's mother. She said, I told my sister, look, you've got to keep an eye on her because there's rumors. She said that her sister would say he would never do anything like that. He's her godfather. Chash said that the tape divided a family that would once gather for Sunday dinners. After Sparkle was shown a copy of the tape in 2001 by an associate of a Chicago personal injury lawyer, she tried to persuade her siblings to watch it as well. Only her brother Benny, who also testified for the prosecution, agreed. Both the mother and the father of the niece refused. They no longer speak to Sparkle. Again, this was back in 2007. Neither does the niece. Now, after the verdict, Sparkle told Blender that her family had covered up for R. Kelly to preserve his connection to the music industry big shot. But they had more personal motives, too. They were humiliated. She said that the father, Mr. Lanfair's career benefited from his association with R. Kelly and that he played the guitar on four albums. The R album, TP2.com, Chocolate Factory, TP3 Reloaded, two of which came out after R. Kelly was charged with possession of child pornography. Sparkle believes that without a doubt, the Lanfairs received money from R. Kelly and she says that her niece, who was 23 at the time, has become a fixture at R. Kelly's compound. They call it a hip-hop playboy mansion with a shark tank, game room, theater, recording studio, and an indoor pool. Kitty Jones mentioned in the Surviving R. Kelly documentary that she had never seen the sex tape before, but she googled it and the images that she saw on the sex tape matched the girl that he introduced her to as a woman, so old girl is still around him. Her brother who's the drummer for SZA and Chance the Rapper is still around him. This girl was a freaking baby and it seems like her family just failed her for money to try to get out of debt and the sad part is, is they filed bankruptcy two more times after this filing. You're supposed to wait eight years before you can file again so they filed in 2007 and then they filed again in 2010 but that one was denied. So they waited and filed again in 2016 and that one was approved. So my thing is this, it seems like they're obviously trying to keep up with the Joneses, live a life that they obviously cannot afford, going into debt trying to prove themselves to people. And then it seems like they sold their daughter to get out of debt only to get back into debt. Like what did you really get out of this? Although she looks to be doing okay right now and spending time with her family, I can only help but wonder, like, does she ever question her parents? Like, why didn't y'all fight harder for me? Why didn't y'all actually go to trial for this man? Like, does she see anything wrong or does she think it's okay? They're saying that she didn't finish school. She didn't have the normal lifestyle that most kids her age have. I mean, that girl really went through some things. I feel like her family definitely tried to use her as a come up. And the gag is they didn't come up off of anything. They probably ended up with karma happening and they ended up losing cars left and right back in 2016 they ended up giving up a Nissan Altima in their bankruptcy proceedings so they didn't even have the Lincoln Navigator anymore it just seems like their life went downhill and I don't care what y'all say karma comes after the best of them I definitely commend Sparkle for fighting for what is right I've heard some things about her but I'm definitely commending her for the fact that she didn't put her music career over her family she decided nope I'm gonna fight for my family and that ended up washing her whole music career didn't nobody hear about her for years and to the family of this girl, Mr. and Mrs. Lanfair, you are despicable. I am sorry. There's no way in the world you should not have fought for your daughter. And karma will come back to you if it hasn't already. As a matter of fact, your 2016 bankruptcy document is 40 more pages than your 2010 bankruptcy document. So you were in even deeper debt in 2016 than you was in 2010. And for what? You have absolutely nothing to show for it. It's people like you that really piss me the hell off because it's people out here that are really trying to have kids and then it's people like you that'll sit up there and sell your child for what to get into debt child let me get off my soapbox I just want to see what y'all think about this entire situation I'm gonna tell you it just really pissed me off because I know people that are really trying to have kids and there's people out here that'll give anything to have a baby and then you have people that pretty much sell their children like what the hell y'all tell me what you think about this situation what y'all think about this family and what they did and you know how we do we'll talk about it down below 
And before you go, don't forget to hit the bell for notifications, like this video, and subscribe. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.